Hello and welcome to Connecting Voices, a television show dedicated to producing news on social issues for ages 14 and 24. My name is Jessica Cruz Garnett and today we will be discussing a topic of young girls of color being disproportionately pushed out of a school as opposed to their white counterparts. I have with me Imare Ojo, a Sister in Strength Youth Organizer and advocate for the empowerment of youth women of color. Thank you for coming and joining us today. It's my pleasure to come forward and talk to you today. According to Advocate for Children of New York, black students make up, up about 26% of enrollment in schools and 41% are Latino. 53% of suspensions are of black students and 35% are of Latino students. This, this makes me wonder, what's going on in these schools? What type of support systems, what types of support systems do we have in our schools? The fact of the matter is we don't really have support systems within our school. So instead of really talking to a child about what's going on within their home or what's really motivating them to do an action, they're just automatically suspended or expelled. There's no guidance counselors coming into the situation or talk, talking to the child or no restorative justice programs that allow a child to really explain what's happening with them. Very interesting. So there's no like a counseling process? No, when a student gets into a fight or an argument with right. a student or a teacher, they're mm -hmm. automatically sent to the principal's office or the dean's office. And from there, they might have like a minute to explain themselves, but they don't really get the full story of what was going on for the student. Sure. And then they just automatically set out their discipline. So they either expel the student, suspend them, give them the intention, or take, just taking the student out of the classroom is already putting them at harm. Oh, I see. So do you think that it's like the professors, they need such a type of uh, training in regarding that there's like missing some training in that most definitely they okay. need some training to really understand how to talk to a student mm -hmm. to get to the root of what's going on within their homes and really understand what's going on with them if they don't have any training they don't really know how to approach a student and in the end a student just ends up feeling really attacked or violated by the teacher if they come around this, the wrong way to them very interesting one of the biggest issues is that it's the fact that students of color are being suspended or expelled and forced to attend alternative schools for minor instances, such as violating the dress code, which is more often a girl's issue, right? Mm -hmm. What does the role of race plays, play in school discipline for young girls of color? So young girls of color are automatically assumed to be louder or more rowdy than other girls. And they're about like six times more likely to be expelled or suspended from their school building just because of their race and gender. Six times? Yes. So it's like, a bit, it's like a really big gap and they're really being stereotyped and they're really, sorry, they're really being stereotyped within their classroom and with that assumption of who they are also comes the assumption of how to treat them. Right. So why are girls of color, especially black, mm -hmm. disproportionately disciplined? because there's not any way to really address them within the school building and they're automatically thought of as loud. So when you think of a child as loud or rudy, you're automatically thinking, oh, I need to make sure I set an example for that child and make a, teach them a lesson. So when teachers go out their way to address the one loud, rudy black girl in the right. classroom, they make sure to give them the most harsh form of discipline. So it goes based on the stereotypes? Yes. According to the Student Safety Act data, we see that over nearly 9,000 suspensions occurred for insubordination and only 500 were bullying. And as we know, bullying has taken so many youth lives away. So out of 9,000 suspensions, only 500 were due to bullying. This term, insubordination, is so vague. What is an insubordinate student? An insubordinate student is just a student who defies authority or whatever they call authority. Right. So if a teacher finds like, oh, you're just talking back to them or asking the teacher a question within the classroom at the wrong time period yes. that they feel might be the wrong situation or the wrong time to ask a question, that can, they can just label that as insubordination. So things like B21 within the school code, they allow for teachers to just use that reason without any real justification for why a student should be taken out the classroom. Right. So basically, students are being suspended for things that they should not be suspended for. 
why students who committed a misbehavior are only punished by one option, which is suspension. Because I believe there's no restorative justice programs within schools that allows any other option besides suspension. So when teachers and deans think that the only option is, oh, I'm going to have to suspend this child, they're not really thinking ahead of like what this will do to the child themselves. Because suspension is just like the step to expulsion and getting a child out of school completely. So when you're pushing this child out, you just tell them you don't care about them and you don't care what they're going through. And that's something that's really harmful to a child's development and having them pushed through in life. Definitely true. So it's been almost all around the news about the new discipline code. Can you please talk a little bit about that? What was it and what is going to be and what is it now? Can you talk about it? So under Mayor Bloomberg's reign, the, the discipline code was really strict and it just was like zero tolerance. So if a student dis disbehaved or defied authority, they were just kicked out. No questions were asked, they were kicked out. So with the new discipline code coming out from Mayor de Blasio, it's just giving more room for students to actually voice their opinions and talk about the issue at hand. So the discipline code was really harsh and it prevented a lot of students from graduating. It was a zero tolerance policy that, put, that was put in place that really said if you're doing something wrong, you're automatically pushed out. So there were no options? There were no options. You're suspended or you're expelled. You're kicked out of school. You're pushed out and you're not asking any questions about it. So with Mayor, Blo with Mayor de Blasio's new initiative to do the new discipline code, there's a lot of more room for young students of color to voice their opinions and say what's going on for them. Right. So with the, within the code, there's more stuff put in place that stops B21 for being pushed forward. So before with B21, it's just defined authority. And deans, principals, and teachers are just able to use B21 as a valid excuse for pushing students out of school. Now they have to go through a whole process and a system to really allow for them to say B21 is what, need, what needs to be happening right here. So they're saying that another person has to come to the situation and really analyze it and say, what's going on here? Why is the student acting like this? Why is the teacher saying that this is what the student is doing and what needs to happen? So within that period of time, what happened with the student? She's going to be in limbo. Because we, we don't know how long it's going to take for this person to, you know, to evaluate the situation and so forth. It takes like a week or so for okay. the situation to be fully evaluated right. and dealt with. But during that time, the student is just allowed to go in their classroom and continue with their school day. They might have some monitoring on them, but they're for general allowed to continue with their school day and get everything they need to from their classes and teachers. Right. And from the new discipline code, they also is developed the leadership team. Okay, so good. with the leadership team, a lot of organizations work together with both adults and young children, and they just come forward and talk about things that are play in the school system that either halt a student's development or help it. So Girls with Gender Equity is part of the leadership team along with other organizations, and we, we're just working to make sure that there's a more comfortable environment for young women of color and young children of color overall. Right. So I've heard that these so-called trouble kids, the LGBTQ youth, they actually, they've been suspended or expelled without any explanation. Can you please just uh, talk a little bit about that? So at the LGBTQ youth, they're not really, they're still not addressed fully and they're not really looked into as much as other minorities. So when you see a young transgender male within school, he's not really protected or guided the same way other kids are. So he, like, he might act out in certain ways to get attention or just say, I'm in need of help. And others might take that as, I want to start a problem or I'm trying to get in trouble. And his problem is not really addressed the same way as others because not all counselors or teachers really know how to handle situations with LGBTQ youth. So what is uh, the organization that you're working for and other organizations doing in order for these new um, policies to introduce or include the LGBTQ youth? We're bringing forward their stories. So we meet a lot of young LGBTQ youth who are experiencing harsh discipline within their schools and we're just bringing forward their problems and saying that this, these problems do exist and these stories need to be heard. There's been recent news that there were going to be changes to the school discipline policies. Let's talk about the importance and relevance of these changes. What's the update? What does this mean for students and for schools around New York City? With the updated school discipline code, there's a more comfortable environment place for students. 
So instead of just automatically jumping to some assumptions and launching to B21 and saying you're defined authority, they have to go through a longer, they have to go through a longer process to prove that this student is so-called defined authority. So they give students a chance to explain themselves and really talk about what's going on for themselves. Right. Dignity of Schools campaign promote these statistics each year. Over one million young people drop out of school and millions more receive a sustainable education. What is the difference between being pushed out and dropping out? When you say being pushed out and dropping out, it's around the same thing because it's still a child no longer coming to school. They're losing that education and they no longer have that foundation to move forward in life. Okay. So when they're being pushed out of school, they're just, the, the teachers and deans and principals, they're just literally expelling them and suspending them and making them lose days of classroom. And when the t by the time they come back to the classroom, they're lost. They don't know how to keep up with the class and they no longer know the material being taught in the class. Right. This pushes the students out and it forces them outside the school building and leads them to other alternative lifestyles, which is not the best route for them. Totally true. Why does the media label this youth as dropout rather than pushed out? I don't think the media really understands these youths. So once again, like these stereotypes that are commonly associated with the youth that are being pushed out of school, they automatically thought as loud or they automatically thought as rowdy or they, or they needed to get pushed out. They did right. not need to be in the school. They were disturbance. And when you say in a child is a disturbance, uh, everybody thinks, oh yeah, that disturbance must be pushed out. They need to leave unless the other students are not going to get what they need. But when you're saying that one student needs to leave for other students to get what they need, that's really unfair. And the media just promotes this image of young black kids being lower than others and being like dumber than others and not needing the same things that other students need. Even Latino kids, they're also promoted as not unworthy. So uh, talking a little bit more about the school discipline policies and the importance and relevance of these changes, how do you believe zero tolerance policies at the schools have aggravated the problem? I think zero tolerance policies really put, uh, they really move forward pushing out students. So when you're saying, if you're saying that, oh, if you do one act and then you're out. Right. That's telling all students, if you make one mistake, you make one action, you're no longer cared about, you have, to be, you have to leave the school immediately. That's giving no room for explanation or no room for redemption for a student. What about their parents? Do their parents uh, ask for an explanation? If a parent comes to the school and asks for an explanation, it doesn't change the situation. It doesn't change what happens to the student. So once a suspension or expulsion is already put in place, it's really hard to get it reversed. Many times after suspension, a student begins to no longer feel engaged in school. Right, yeah. that's you mentioned earlier. What do you think is the bigger issue? Is it race, class, gender, or just having bad teachers? I think it's all intersectional. So when you factor in race and class and gender and all those things into one person, right. it really affects them from different angles. So if you have like a young white male inside the classroom, of course he'll be more likely to succeed and more likely to go through and move on to college. Right. Then when you think of a young black male, he's a little less likely to go to college, a little less likely to see, succeed. And then when you think of a young Latino or a young black girl, she's even less likely to succeed, less likely to go to college, less likely to move forward in her life. And then when a young, when a young girl like that is kicked out of school, there's only like a 51% chance that they're gonna move forward and finish their education. That is true. What advice can you give to a student who is dealing with being pushed out? Pushed out? The biggest form of advice I can give them is know your rights. So they give, they're supposed to give you a blue book every, at the beginning of every school year. Okay. So read that book and really understand what's exactly in there. If a student or a teacher, if a teacher comes forward with you and says, you're defying this code, you're going against this, and you need to be expelled, you need to go back and read it yourself. Instead of letting just somebody else tell you what's going to happen to you, you need to understand what's happening for yourself. Right, it's about knowledge. Yeah. It's been a word. Okay. So, um, for a girl who is no longer feeling engaged, right, and after a suspension she goes back to school, but she's no longer interested to, pers you know, to yeah. continue in the learning process, what, can you, what are you, your suggestions for her? I think finding a group within the school that really helps you or is 
open to helping you or having a group of friends that are open to helping you keep up with the curriculum or just passing you the notes that they have from class, that would make a big difference. So if you're able to just understand around the same, like what happened in your class while you were gone, instead of teachers just being like, you're gone, you're not in my class, da da da, and they're not really understanding what you're doing at home, just keeping up with the work for yourself. Because if you don't do it, nobody else will make sure that you have it. So um, I know you touched a little bit about this, but what about the counselors, the school counselors? Like, do they do something about it? I mean, guidance counselors within the school, there are more security guards within our school than there are guidance counselors. And I ha right. that's something that's a high alarm for most schools within New York City. So if you have 500 kids in one grade and you only have two guidance counselors, that's not enough to touch every student and understand what's going on for each one of them. So it's only when the situation at hand comes to play, then the guidance counselor is brought in for like one second to understand. So basically it's just having peer support. Yeah. That's the only um, option. If students in New York City can get suspended for up to 180 days, an entire school year, they are then forced to attend an alternative school. What is an alternative school? A alternative school is just like a school that helps you finish up and get the rest of your credits, but it doesn't really put you in place to go to higher education or get higher paying jobs. So it's just like a basic, it's like the same, around the same thing as just getting a GED, basically, with a high, whatever, um, alternative school. Right. Oh, wow. I read that alternative schools are more strict than regular schools, since they have limited space to use and sometimes there is no cafeteria to socialize, so students uh, tend to have lunch in their studying areas. So uh, do you see any like similarity between that and prison? There's a large similarity between alternative school and prison because you're just giving these kids one space saying, if you don't make it here, not even with prison, they're just saying that you have to make it here. If you don't, what are you gonna do with yourself? They're, giving, they're putting you in a small room with other kids a problem, but you only have a few teachers to deal with your problems. And the curriculum within the schools that they're in the alternative schools is not the same that you would get in a high school. Right. So you're losing out on that education, you're losing out opportunities to push yourself further and really advance within your life. This magazine published an article about a young black girl who was expelled and faced with charges of writing the word hi on her locker. Her white friend did the same and was able to pay a $100 fine and suspend her for a few days. What do you think is the bigger issue? Is it the race, class, or just bad teacher? I think the race and class really seem to have a big impact on this story. In this situation, yes. Yes, because first, the as a young white girl of color, I mean, a young white girl only paying a $100 fine and then moving on her education, and then the young black girl is being suspended or kicked out of the school for a minimal action. So I think they're just looking more at her race and being like, okay, so this is a black girl, she wants to act out of hand and she wants to make herself known or show herself out in the school. And with the young white girl, she's, I think young white women are often deemed as more the, the more innocent or pure race within our, for women. Right. And then for young black girls of color, they overlooked as, oh, I'm sorry, I'm messing up with this part. So young black girls of color are often looked as rowdy and loud and just being really extra personalities and they often looked as like we have to handle them or we have to press them down and make sure they know how to act. Sure. So it's also about class because the young black girl might not have the same funds as the young white girl. And oftentimes it is a disproportionate economy class yes. between the two. So the girl might have money to pay off and get herself excused from detention or suspension, where the black girl might not have the same amount of money with her parent household. Right, so it's basically a stereotypes and expectations from society. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Another article, this is from Seventeen Magazine, mm -hmm. published an article where a young, girl, a young white girl was re reprimanded for violating dress code. Once again, dress code. In this case, the difference is she was giving three options. One, they can remain in the offending clothes and have a two-day in school suspension. Two, they can wear the, sh the shame suit, you know the shame suit, the bright yellow shirt that says uh, violating dress code. Mm -hmm. And the third one, they can have a parent pick them up. What are your comments on this article? Any criticism and defenses that the issue was not race or class related? I think with 
women of color and generally they're often like they have body policing on them so they're saying that our bodies are not really fit to for clothes and we try to sexualize our clothing if our hips are too large or if our our bosom is too large so with young white girls they are, they don't really have the same body proportions and stuff like that mm -hmm. as ours so them giving them more less harsh version of this discipline whereas the black girls are you or black and latina girls are often like oh you're doing that on purpose you're trying to have your body exposed you're trying to show your body to the world and that comes with like the idea of women of color being over sexualized in media right so when we're looking at them like oh they're trying to bring men's attention or trying to bring more attention to their bodies and themselves they often think oh yeah they should not be doing that oh yeah they need to be suspended oh yeah they need to be expelled oh yeah they need to have detention right but in this case if you as as we mentioned earlier uh, we touch about options right mm -hmm. the white girl she was giving three options yeah the black girl or darker skin she wasn't given an option she was just suspended I've seen a lot of girls within my middle school, high school, mm -hmm. get detention, suspension for their clothing, where like a white girl wouldn't, and there would be options for the white girl. With a black, with a young black girl or a young Spanish girl, she's automatically assumed to be trying to draw attention to herself, and she's given no options. So uh, now we know that it's a race and a class issue, mm -hmm. right? So how do we respond to this? I think the best way to respond to it is giving attention to these girls who are being who are experiencing discipline within their schools for those for minimal actions so if we bring attention to their stories we're able to tell other people that this is wrong and once you start speaking about oh this is wrong oh this should not be happening within our schools more attention gets focused on the teachers and the deans and principals within the school and what they're doing what their role is in this situation okay so um is there like any because once again, I want to talk about the parents. Yeah. Because me, as a young person, anything that's going on in the school, I will go and talk to my parents about it. Yeah. And I'm expecting them to, dis to defend me mm -hmm. or to explain to me what's going on. Is there any, like, um, group of parents that are advocating for their young kids in this situation to have more options that you know of? There are many groups of parents. Their names are not coming right up to my right, mind personally, right. but I know there are a lot of groups of parents that are coming forward and trying to defend kids' rights within schools mm -hmm. and just trying to protect their children or the children they might have going into schools sure. and make sure that they're okay and make sure that there's no system against them that's halting them from their development and their progression within the school buildings. Yeah, it's just if we just talk about the media, media, they usually pay more attention to young black and Latino uh, men that are you know, doing any misbehavior in school because they are the ones that tend to go to uh, jail, to prison, like, you know, more often. But why is that the media ignores more uh, girls, girls being suspended, especially uh, girls of color being suspended? I think there's the same idea that we come from a patriarchal society where the men and the boys are more looked at as, as the achievers and the breadwinners and the people who come bring money into their household so I think there's a I think many people believe that you need to start with the boys or the males first before you help the girls so when you start with the boys and you're saying that oh we had to push you further and we had to make sure that you succeed and then you're neglecting the young women of color you're just telling them that you have to wait till your man comes home and gives you money or you have to wait till your brother succeeds before you can succeed and you're not they're not really giving them chances to, to succeed within their own selves and they're telling them stay at the position that you are right now that's a very good point. The Washington Post published an article titled Suspend the Student Lost Millions of Days of Instruction While Out of School. That stated, over 80 million days of school were lost by United States students between 2011 and 2012. The numbers are more likely to increase over the next years. What can people who are concerned about this disparity do to begin to correct it? I think coming up to your local high school or middle school and just talking with the people with, who work within it and just talking about what you can do to make sure that students are taken care of within the school or talking to your city, city council person or your mayor or writing a letter to your mayor actually, just addressing the problem because when there's work in numbers. Right. So when there's more numbers coming out and then more people's coming, people coming out, more light is put on the situation. That's true. So telling our representatives about the situation, yeah. this is going on and this has to be fixed or stopped. Yeah. So you just want your voice to be heard. As long as you're voicing your opinions and you're voicing what's going on for you or your child, more attention will be given to that situation. 
Very good. What are some solutions being proposed by organizations such as Girl for Gender Equality or those faced by this issue? Um, some, uh, so, uh, sorry, some alternative situations or alternatives being presented by our organization is restorative justice programs and mandatory guidance council mediation. So with restorative justice programs, that's just allowing, uh, that's putting in place a system where the person who's having a problem and the other person who's having a problem with them, whether it be a student or a teacher, they're able to sit down and really talk about what led to that problem, what led to it blossoming and developing as far as it did. And then with mandatory guidance counselor intervention, you're putting a guidance counselor in the middle of the situation before it gets out of hand. So when you're seeing the problem starting to blossom and bloom, you're automatically saying this needs to be somebody able to deal with the situation and diffuse it. So basically, it's what we, what we have been talking about before. If a child has been, if a youth has been suspended, mm -hmm. when, when she or he goes back to school, there will be some guardians, there will be some counselor. So it's going to help that youth to get involved, to go back and to continue in, in his or her life. Yeah, and when we're saying, we don't have to wait till the student gets suspended or expelled before they get some type of aid. When we started with justice programs, you're putting that in place before the student gets a chance to be expelled or suspended, and you give them a chance to actually talk about their problem and understand where they're coming from. And it, yeah, give them actual chance to survive within the school building and move forward with themselves. Because a suspension and expulsion, that doesn't go off your record. That stays on your record. And when you're trying to apply for jobs or to college, that's something that they really look at and they will talk to you about and really judge you on. That's true. Where can youth get more information about the organization Girls for Gender Equality? So you can go to our website, gge.org, or you can just come to our office. It's in downtown Brooklyn by 33rd Avenue. So you just stop by or just, you can visit our Facebook page, our Instagram, just anything. We are a very open organization, so if you want to call us or if you want to visit our office, there's always somebody there to talk to you and speak to you about the problem that you're going through. Do you have any statement? Do you want something to put out there for youth to know? So it's just the Students United will never be defeated. That's just saying that we have power within our voices and when we all come together and say what we need to say and talk about our problems, we cannot be defeated and we, nobody can stop us.